my workbench, where I breathe new life into old computers. But even with the room light on, I find I'm working in shadow. I can use my filming light, which is better, but it gets in the way. As I also wanted coloured lighting for a good stream background, I bought some RGB light strips with a controller. Unfortunately, they both flicker on camera and don't give a good white light for normal use because they only have red, green and blue LEDs in each unit. The remote control was also restrictive on what colours I could choose. So I decided to make my own. This 12 volt, 2 amp supply works, but I later found it struggled so I would recommend at least a 3 amp supply. Four of these high speed controllers allow each colour of LED to be dimmed without flicker on camera. A barrel jack socket that matches the power supplies plug. Some 5 pin LED connectors. And 5 core cable to match. This 5 meter roll has all in one RGB with cool white modules at a dense 60 LEDs per meter. And to house the controllers, a small project box. To mount the LED strips, I also have these meter long aluminium strips, which come with diffusers and fixings. With the position of each controller measured and marked on the lid, I drill holes slightly wider than the diameter of the controller's shaft. Before I solder the power connector, I should first check whether the PSU is centre positive. Usually the label should state the polarity, but this one doesn't. A quick check with a multimeter confirms it is though. Best make sure I get the solder tabs the right way around too. The solder fume extractor I made nearly two years ago is still keeping my lungs safe. Heat shrink prevents shorts and gives a nice professional look. If you can't see what I've forgotten though, you soon will. I need to daisy chain the power to each controller and one way is to remove some of the wire coating and make a twist. I do the same for the positive and negative to the input of each controller and check they all work. The controllers have a location tab to prevent them spinning out of alignment, so I need to make corresponding notches in the lid. I needed a straight edge that fitted inside the lid. Who says floppy disks aren't useful? A small pen type drill holder is good for a couple of intricate shallow holes per controller. making it easy to use a sharp scalpel to square off the hole. The controllers fit into place firmly and can't move. They all line up nicely too. The 
power connector needs to feed in through a hole, so I need to undo some of my work to disconnect it. Although thinking ahead would have prevented this, sometimes you just need to get building. With the controller removed, I can get to the connector screws so I can remove the wire. Remember the heat shrink from earlier? Well, now it's preventing me from removing the nut. So that's one more thing I need to undo. Removing only one though is enough to allow the nut to pass. A digital caliper makes sizing the right drill bit easy, but a ruler would do if you don't have one to hand then it's a case of feeding it in and getting the nut back on. This thinner heat shrink I have shrinks very quickly so I don't melt the case. This piece of heat shrink has a glue inside and will work as a cable strain relief later. On this cable the black lead is power and I connect this directly to the incoming 12 volts at the first connector. The red, green, blue and white cables are the grounds from each LED and just need to be connected to the grounds on each controller, one per colour. I need to create a channel for the flat cable to exit and to remove this weather seal first. Then find a good position for the heat shrink. I like things neat and central, so of course I'm going to measure the exact centre. A set of small files is useful for jobs like this.
The seal then goes back and trimmed from the filed section. By reheating the heat shrink, the glue softens and I can squeeze it to custom fit the gap before it cools. I wish the hot air station made less noise though. Can anyone recommend a near silent model? With the glue cooled, there is now a ridge that locks into the case. You can buy various LED strip housings for different mounting styles and these are surface mount with a diffuser. They come with clips, screws and these end caps. Some of the end caps have a hole for the cable but it's too small for my 5 core cable. Some high temperature captain tape at either end should help insulate and prevent shorts. And when I solder the connections, it shouldn't melt from the heat of the soldering iron. The LED strips have an adhesive backing and I leave a gap at the end for the wiring. then it's a case of tinning and wiring them in parallel. Checking for bad connections or unwanted shorts is definitely worth the time before applying power. The diffusers slide in from one end. I've also modified the end caps so they now fit over the wires, 
giving a nice neat finish. And another bank of two are made up for the lower shelf. Careful measuring ensures the lights will be central and neatly aligned. The bench's frame allows the cable to the controller to be reasonably hidden. The cable connects to the two banks of lights in parallel and runs back underneath the desk to where I have mounted the controller. Shadows be gone. And if I get bored with white light, well, now I can mix any combination I want. The master power switch providing a quick way to switch it off without changing what it's set to. Oh and there's one last job, and it's the most satisfying too. So with better lighting for refurbs and funky lighting for streams, you'll now know how that happened. And until next time, goodbye.